Hello, welcome to Walk in the Park. My name is Tony Ingram. And this is, let's see what date we are here. Episode number 50. And we're recording on June 26, 2013. Now, if you want to see all of my episodes, you can go to walkinpark.com. You'll find my blog there, and you can search for Walk in the Park TV postings, and you can find them all. So uh, a lot of interesting things on there. I encourage you to do that. So today we're going to go to a park in Ithaca. We're going to go to a couple of parks in Ithaca, and actually maybe three, and then we will go to some very exotic places. But uh, this time we're going to go, first of all, we're going to go to DeWitt Park on the day of the Ithaca Festival Parade. I was standing across the street from DeWitt Park watching the parade. So we'll uh, just have, a, you're going to watch the Ithaca Festival Parade in less than six minutes total time.
Okay, so that's a nice little uh, um, recall of uh, that wonderful parade. And of course, in the very beginning, you saw the street was wet. I guess it's all the way through. It had its obligatory Ithaca parade shower, but fortunately, it only rained on the parade for the just first five or ten minutes. So, um, well, then it got very hot on Friday and Saturday, and I didn't spend a lot of time out at the festival then. And uh, but I did get out to um, DeWitt Park once more for Friday evening when it cooled off a little bit. And then uh, on Sunday, we had a beautiful day, as it turned out, at Stewart Park. So I got another little clip that will um, show you just a little bit of highlight of those two parks. Okay, well, uh, one of the other um, events during uh, the month of June, of course, the festival took place at the end of May, the beginning of June, uh, is Father's Day, and we all have celebrated that in various ways, honoring the fathers in our lives. If we are fathers, we all have fathers. Um, in any case, the East Hill Flying Club, every Father's Day, has a pancake breakfast up uh, at their hangar uh, near the airport, and they also offer rides for a fee in small planes um, over Cayuga Lake and even over by Taganic Falls State Park. So three years ago, I went up in the, one of those flights and I took video and made this little video. I've shown it, I show it about once a year and um, the, uh, well, I'll show it to you here now. Every Father's Day, Ithaca's East Hill Flying Club holds a public pancake breakfast at its hangar at the Ithaca Airport. This Father's Day, I took a 25-minute ride in one of their small airplanes piloted by a staff member. We flew north over Lansing. Soon, Cayuga Lake came into view. We could see back to Ithaca at the south end of the lake.
Taganic Point on the west shore came into view briefly. Looking north, we could see Millican Point on the east shore, location of the area's coal-fired electric power generating plant. Cayuga Lake is the longest of the 11 Finger Lakes stretching 38 miles from Ithaca in the south, nearly to the Erie Canal in the north. After flying across the lake, we were over Taganic Falls State Park. The 215 feet high waterfall came into view. We flew above the upper gorge upstream from the big falls. As we banked around to begin heading back toward Ithaca, we could see the entire gorge ending in Taganic Point projecting into Cayuga Lake. We glanced back north along Cayuga Lake's remarkable length. Looking south of the city, we could see the glacial trough of the Cayuga Inlet Valley, extending for miles south of the city itself. We flew across Ithaca back toward the airport. We could see Taganic Point projecting into the lake as we began our descent.
Okay, so that's a pretty cool experience. Um, how else are you going to get a view like that of Tiganic Falls or even of the lake? In a commercial airline, you can get a view like that of the lake, but over Tiganic Falls like that, that's you really have to take a small plane flight, and it will. Uh, you'll have another opportunity if you didn't go this time to the pancake breakfast. Another opportunity. They do it in September on one weekend in September as well, so twice twice a year. So now we're going to go to uh, Buttermilk Falls State Park and go along the gorge trail there. And it has been so wet and summer now and it's warm. And I remember walking down the gorge trail, looking at these trees and thinking, wow, this feels like tropics. It feels like Costa Rica. I was down in Costa Rica once and I was hiking in the woods there in the rain and I said, gee, it feels just like home in the summertime on a wet summer day in the woods so um, so we're kind of in the in the tropics now we're in the rainforest uh, a little bit it seemed to be raining every day almost just a little earlier in the month uh, in some of the more enclosed sections of gorges around here you'll see this small maple tree it's called a mountain maple and it really only gets the size of a shrub it often is growing off the side of the cliff or the embankment and doesn't really grow very tall. And it, uh, if you look on the, um, the tops of the branches, you can see little clusters of flowers, inflorences or whatever. And they make um, little winged seeds, little samaras, uh, later in the summer. So this is one of our lesser known maples, mountain maple, that uh, is one of the seven maples native to New York State. So we'll have another show about maples sometime. We'll talk about the seven maples native to New York State. But um, so as I continue along the um, the gorge trail in Buttermilk Falls, or or it could be another gorge, any uh, close gorge like this. Um, well, in this case, I was walking by a wall, this wall here that a lot of people walk by along the trail. I won't tell you exactly where this is, but um, uh, I walk by it many times because I live near the park. I go in there almost every day. And one time I was walking along there just recently, the, uh, last week, and I heard a little cheeping noise. Cheep, 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 cheep. And people were walking by it, not noticing it, not noticing it, and I hadn't noticed it in the previous walk. So I took a closer look into this particular niche in the cliff, and there was a little nest back in there. And let's get a closer look. I didn't want to scare the nestlings, but I took this picture of little flycatchers that were nesting the baby Eastern Phoebes, which is uh, one of the fly capper, catcher species we have in the area. And they indeed do like to nest in our gorges in places such as this. And you can see their nest is made out of moss and mud. And so look for those in our gorges, but don't disturb them, of course, because you don't want the, the nestlings to fall out or otherwise get hurt. So I hung around and I waited around, waited around and tried to get a picture of the parent who was feeding them. And I don't know if you can find that bird, the adult flycatcher that was feeding the babies. It's up on the branch on the left. Let's zoom in a little bit. There it is, just left of center. There's the little adult flycatcher that was feeding those babies. Still not that good a picture. It's a little bit fuzzy. So I went to uh, the internet and I got a really nice picture from this uh, nature park in, I think, Wisconsin. And this is the Eastern Phoebe. And another one common in our forests is the Eastern Wood Peewee, which says its name. They both say their names. But Phoebe is very common. They will often uh, build nests under the eaves of buildings and you know, on little ledges and so forth around buildings. So it uh, resembles their natural nesting habitat. All right, so now we're going to go 
out west a little bit, just for a couple of parks out west. I'm going to flip around a little bit. Let's go out to Rocky Mountain National Park. In the uh, summertime, that's the time to visit the places that have been clad in snow and are pretty uh, hostile with winter weather. But this is Rocky Mountain National Park. A picture taken from the highest part of the park you can go to by vehicle on Trail Ridge Road, which goes up to like 12,000 feet. But this is looking at a forest fire on the other side of the ridge. I think that's looking west. And it's called the Big Meadows Fire. And it burned for quite a while. This was June 11th when they took this picture. I just read on the internet today that on their, on their Facebook page that uh, the fire is now 95% controlled but it could flare up in the center of the fire area uh, for quite some time. But uh, I'm sure you've been hearing about the forest fires that have been happening out west. Well, this was one of them in Colorado. Maybe not as big as the ones down near Colorado Springs. So fortunately, they got that one under control. Now let's go up to Washington State, and this is Mount Rainier National Park. And Mount Rainier right there, one of their views. And they say on the, actually, I got this off their Facebook page. And what do they say? Uh, no, 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 I don't see what they say. But anyway, um, they ask you to uh, figure out what view this is and what else can you see in there. Well, I don't know. I was out there once, but uh, that was a long time ago. But Mount, Mount Rainier is over 14,000 feet high, and it has some 26 glaciers on it. And, of course, this is the time of year to visit it in the summer if you can get out to these amazing places. But there are some other amazing landscapes that a lot of people are not aware of, uh, but many are, closer to home. Now, where would you think this is? Hmm, somewhere out west, right? No, this is in the Adirondacks. This is in what, near what's called the Great Range Trail. This is a particular mountain. It's called Sawteeth on the right. And then right behind it is a mountain called Gothics. And to the left of that is Pyramid Mountain. So they're, high, they're very steep, highly carved by the glaciers during the Ice Age, and uh, very rugged country. This is the most rugged area of New York State, so it's pretty tough hiking. I did a lot of hiking there when I was young, but I haven't been up there in a few years. One of the things they don't tell you in the travel brochures and videos and so forth and pictures like this is that when you go up there, particularly in June, but often lasting in much later into the summer, you have to contend with bugs, particularly black flies. Up in New England, up in the Adirondacks, up in the White Mountains, up in Maine, and on up into Canada, these pesky little flies emerge from the streams where their larvae are feeding. and they look for a blood meal so they can lay eggs. They're kind of, they're kind of like mosquitoes, but not exactly. And uh, they are just swarming by them billions, and uh, they, they're quite a nuisance when you're up there. When the black flies settle down, their population is low, then the mosquitoes take over, and then when the mosquitoes are done in, uh, later in July, the no they call them, these tiny little gnats that can go through the netting on your tent, in your tent, take over. But um, so here's another picture from the northeast. It looks like maybe out west or something, but this is actually in the White Mountains of New Hampshire, and there's a large area there above Timberline. There is some in the Adirondacks, too, above in the Alpine Zone, above where trees can grow because the weather is just too severe at that altitude. And uh, the mountains out west we were looking at, the Rocky Mountains, and um, you know, Rocky Mountain National Park, they also are above Timberline, but Timberline is much higher on the mountains. So. Um, this is uh, the label on this picture was Diapensia Lapland Rose Bay Alpine Azalea. Ever wanted to see these stunning and short-lived alpine flowers? Now's your chance. And the Appalachian Mountain Club, that's who, who uh, took this picture, uh, has uh, hikes and so forth that will uh, take you up there and see this amazing display of alpine flowers. But we're going to continue to go. We got a little bit of time left. Going to go farther north up into Canada, into other country where there is mountain there are mountains above timberline this is as it says parc national de la gaspese i don't know i don't speak french very well but uh this is mont jacques cartier which is the highest mountain in the chic mountains or the notre dame mountains notre dame mountains in quebec in the gaspe peninsula quebec so here is a picture of the province of quebec it's the largest province in canada and if you look to the right you'll see the river reaching down into the into the province, and that's the St. Lawrence River, and then there's a lobe, a, a blobby-looking uh, uh, piece of land. That's the Gaspe Peninsula, and the Gaspe Peninsula on the southern side of the uh, St. Lawrence River, and in the middle of it is, there's that national park right in the middle of it, 
And here is another mountain, Mont, Jacques, Mont, no, Mont Albert, which I climbed when I was in high school when I took a family camping trip up there. And these mountains have like a tableland on top of them. And they're, they're, I don't know whether they're an old plateau that's been eroded and glaciated and so forth, but it's amazing country. And there is a herd of caribou up on top of some of these mountains. And these are actually an endangered species now. And there's only a couple hundred left in the Gaspe Peninsula in south of the St. Lawrence River. And this is on uh, a bull caribou on top of uh, Mont Jacques Cartier. So um, very interesting wildlife areas, very wild areas. It's called uh, Park, you know, National Park of uh, the Gas Gaspesian National Park, but it's actually a provincial park. But in, um, oh, there's my little signal that we're running out of time here. But in uh, Quebec, their provincial parks have been named uh, national parks for their their Quebec nationalism because of the movement to uh, consider themselves their own country. So uh, that's about all the time we have now. Uh, next time maybe we'll get a chance to uh, go farther north in Canada. I had some pictures up in Labrador, but we'll have to wait for that. So thank you, much for, uh, thank you very much for joining me in uh, Walk in the Park, and we'll see you again soon.